It was early morning on the 30th of June, 1908, when a terrifying explosion occurred in the sky above the stony Tunguska River in Siberia. It left 80 million trees flattened, and the affected territory was more than 820 square miles. Thousands of people within 900 miles experienced the Tunguska event, and later, researchers managed to collect more than 700 accounts. Most reports mentioned a fireball in the sky. It was glowing like a second sun. People also spoke about a series of explosions that produced frightful sounds. Sometime later, the ground started shaking as, according to some witnesses, the earth opened wide and everything started falling into the abyss. Was that what really happened? Scientists aren't 100% sure. The indigenous Yakuts and Evenks, for example, believe that a deity sent the fireball to get rid of our world for good. At the same time, numerous meteorological stations in Europe recorded both atmospheric and seismic waves. Days later, weird phenomena were observed in the sky over vast territories, reaching Europe. Those were glowing clouds, colorful sunsets, and even a weak luminescence at night. Some reports mention a blue tube in the sky. International newspapers were speculating about a powerful volcanic eruption. Some scientists thought it could have been a cosmic impact. Unfortunately, it was hard to access the region where the event had occurred, which prevented further scientific investigation. In 1921, mineralogist Leonid Kulik got interested in this story after reading a newspaper article that claimed that passengers of the Trans-Siberian Railway had seen the impact. There were even claims that some of them had managed to touch the still-hot meteorite. Kulik organized an expedition and traveled to the city of Kansk. There, he studied the reports about the event, everything he could find in the local archives. It turned out that the story about the train passengers seeing and encountering the meteorite was a hoax. But Kulik and his team didn't give up. They traveled to the region, following first the Angara River and then the Tunguska River. Then, on April 13, 1927, the researchers discovered a huge area littered with rotting logs. Some extremely powerful force must have flattened them. Shockingly, only at the epicenter of the blast, in the forest of Tunguska, some charred trees were still standing. But the most baffling thing was that even after exploring the entire area, the team didn't find an impact crater or any meteor material. So, in the fall of 1927, Kulik's report was published in different national and international papers. The scientists suggested that an iron meteorite could have exploded in the atmosphere, causing the observed powerful explosion and following devastation. He explained the lack of an identifiable impact site by the swampy ground. The soil could have been too soft for the impact crater to remain. So, despite the lack of physical evidence, Kulik called the event Filamenovo meteorite. Filamenovo was the railway station where people saw an ultra-bright light in the sky. Only some time later did the incident get its name, Tunguska event. Even though this event is quite popular all over the world, scientific data describing it is sparse. Since 1928, more than 40 expeditions have explored the site. They took samples from the soil, rocks, trees, but the results were always ambiguous. Some seismic and air pressure wave registrations, which were recorded right after the blast, are still intact. Plus, about 30 years after the event, researchers mapped the area of the destroyed forest. But since there's almost no hard data, like a crater or a meteorite, and the accounts of the incident are conflicting, many theories of widely varying plausibility have appeared over the years. Among them, there was an asteroid skimming the atmosphere of our planet and a primordial black hole passing directly through it. Wait, what? At the current age of the universe, black holes form when huge stars run out of fuel and collapse under their own gravity. In other words, there's a limit to how small a black hole can be in the current universe. It has to form from substantial amounts of mass gathered in one small region of space. Plus, it can only occur to stars around 20 times the mass of our Sun and larger. But primordial black holes are something else altogether. Their existence hasn't been proven yet, so they remain purely hypothetical. Primordial black holes could have formed in the first few seconds of the existence of the universe. At that stage of its development, all the stuff that would later continue to create stars and galaxies were packed together much more tightly. At that time, 
pockets of hot material might have been dense enough to form various black holes, from giant to teeny tiny ones. The masses of such holes could have been 100,000 times smaller than that of a paperclip. At the same time, these holes could have reached a mass of 100,000 solar masses. Soon after, the universe started to expand very quickly, and it also cooled down. This put an end to the conditions favorable for the formation of primordial black holes. Unfortunately, we haven't detected any such holes yet. But if they formed right after the birth of the universe, it's possible that they might still be somewhere out there. And there's an idea that primordial black holes, smaller than an atom, might be passing through Earth every day without harming our home planet. A larger primordial hole might also visit us every once in a while, every thousand years or so. After learning more about the Tunguska event, a team of physicists published an article in a 1973 Nature paper that the event itself could have been caused by a primordial black hole passing through the planet. The researchers stated that a black hole with the mass of a large asteroid could explain the lack of a crater or any other physical evidence of the impact. Blue light, noticed by witnesses, seemed to fit this theory too. According to the team, in such a case, most of the radiation from the shock front would be in the ultraviolet vacuum. It would then get absorbed and re-radiated at longer wavelengths. There would be just a bit of hard X-radiation, and the accompanying plasma column would look deep blue. Admittedly, it's a very unusual theory. But the team also suggested a way their idea could be tested by looking for signs of an exit wound on the other side of the planet. You see, if a black hole entered Earth, the rigidity of the rock wouldn't allow for any underground shockwave. Because of the black hole's high velocity, and because it would only lose a tiny fraction of its energy while passing through our planet, it would follow almost a straight line through the planet. Such a potential exit could provide a check for the entire hypothesis. The team also suggested looking for shock waves and disturbances in the ocean on the opposite side of the world. But there's a problem with the idea of a black hole passing through Earth. Such a black hole could settle into the core of our planet, and its gravity would allow the black hole to start feeding, eventually devouring our entire world. Plus, there would be a lot of heating. You see, during its passage through Earth, the black hole would gather a lot of matter, and this process would produce a lot of heat. To put it simply, the impact of an asteroid mass black hole would release almost the same amount of energy as the impact of an asteroid, like the one that destroyed dinosaurs. Luckily, according to the existing calculations, the chances of a black hole settling in the core of our planet are minimal, since black holes are just too fast to do so. In any case, the Tunguska event being a black hole passing through our planet is certainly an exciting idea, but no evidence that could prove it has been found yet. Plus, we still don't know whether primordial black holes exist at all. Yep, it's something to ponder. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.